Good day. My name is Lee Sak Hoon. I'm associate professor of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of the Korea University and Am Hospital. Today, I would like to talk about the ovarian tissue cryopreservation, transplantation for fertility preservation in cancer patients. Let's look at the introduction. Cancer incidence is rapidly growing worldwide. In 2018, uh, uh, 8.6 million women were diagnosed with cancer globally. Majority of them uh, uh, were of old age, but we do know that 10% are at the age below 45. Due to advances in cancer uh, uh, diagnosis and treatment, the survival rate uh, uh, with cancer has significantly improved. But also we see elevated uh, cancer uh, incidence in pubertal and young women. It is well known that chemotherapy and radiotherapy for cancer patients can induce uh, ovarian deficiency. Uh, uh, fertility preservation plays a an important role in cancer care. Physicians uh, participate in initial diagnosis and management of such patients should understand the importance for of fertility preservation. If you look at the classification of chemotherapy, then among various types of alkylating agents, uh, gonadal toxicity, uh, it's, well, it's well known that they have high gonadal toxicity. Degree of gonadal damage is divided into high, intermediate, and low risk uh, treatments. Alkylating agents, as which I mentioned, are considered to be the most toxic. As the ones we use usually, such as adriamycin, carboplatin, and Texol, are, uh, are known as uh, intermediate risk treatments. Metotrexate, petfluorouracil, and vincristine, and other agents, they bear low risk of gonadal toxicity. Looking at the cases of a mineral uh, induced by chemotherapy uh, with the drugs uh, often frequently used in case of breast cancer, uh, the, uh, different ages produce different consequences. In the age of 36 to 40, chemotherapy induces a mineral in 70% of cases. In patients above 40, almost 100% of patients uh, produce a mean rare after chemotherapy. You should understand that there is difference uh, uh, in periods when they are resumed in uh, cancer patients um, uh, after chemotherapy and possibility to get pregnant. As you know, even in case of normal periods in patients above 40, pregnancy chances are quite low. And that's why even when um, periods uh, resume after chemotherapy, uh, the, uh, the presence of uh, periods does not guarantee uh, pregnancy. Also, you know that gonadal damage could be induced by radiotherapy. We know that in prepubertal girls, uh, gonadal failure might develop in more than 80% of cases with a dose of only 15 grains. In 2006, ASCO uh, it's American Society of Clinical Oncology presented guidelines on uh, fertility preservation. Here you see S, it's a standard technique, and I means research method or investigational method. Embryo cryoconservation uh, is a standard approach. Patients after radiotherapy uh, and uh, gonadal organization. Patients with cervical cancer, they do uh, uh, ovarian uh, transposition. There are conservative uh, tracheotomy. There are also con other conservative gynecological surgeries, and also there are techniques of ovarian tissue pres uh, preservation or set conservation suppressing ovarian activity uh, with antagonists. Uh, in 2013, the same group also uh, updated the fertility preservation guidelines, where they talk about differences in used cryopreservation methods for embryos and oocytes. Uh, indications uh, for fertility preservation. It could be indicated for the range of uh, cancer patients requiring transplantation. It could be pelvic radiation or, or other radiotherapy, and also such uh, various cancers like pediatric cancer, breast cancer, gynecologic cancer, and uh, leukosis. Uh, and the CN Clinical Practice Guidelines in 2012 published a uh, guide called Adolescent and Young Adult Oncology, uh, which, uh, to make it brief, called the AYA, AYA Oncology. The AYA uh, object 
for uh, is uh, the women in the age of 15 to 30. If you look at the guidelines, you could see that fertility preservation is an integral part of treating AYA patients. Especially, it should be discussed if there is a risk of uh, infertility because of chemo or radiation therapy. So such patients are recommended to uh, turn to the fertility preservation specialist within 24 hours. If you consider fertility preservation strategies, then in cases of male patients, if sperm uh, could be obtained, the best approach is a sperm cryopreservation. Uh, patients uh, in the pre uh, age cannot uh, enjoy this method. In those cases, tissue, testis tissue is biopsied. For girls in pre age, the only method is uh, ovarian tissue cryopreservation. For women of post-pubertal age, if necessary, for, to obtain, uh, if a chemotherapy should be applied as fast as possible, when ovarian stimulation is impossible, or when patient refuses ovarian stimulation, then uh, ovarian tissue is cryopreserved. In, uh, normal, in normal women, uh, depending on the presence or absence of platform, they can do oocyte or embryo cryopreservation. The green color here showed the standard established method, and the orange color shows method which, methods which still are considered as experimental. Then I would like to talk about the uh, ovarian tissue cryoconservation. There are two ways of freezing, so-called slow freezing uh, and vitrification. So uh, the uh, rapid, uh, uh, rapid freezing method. The slow freezing process is presented here. First we select tissue, then cut it to the necessary size, and then uh, place uh, the tissues in the special solutions. After uh, special treatment, ovarian tissue is frozen uh, with the computer. Uh, after frozen, it's, uh, it, uh, we do seeding process and store it in a liquid nitrogen tank. Vitrification process doesn't require any computerized uh, equipment and is a method of uh, 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 immerse the tissue into the liquid nitrogen uh, tank just once the tissue is processed with special uh, solution. Maybe you know that in IVF clinic, embryos and uh, oocytes, once this method appeared, considerably improved IVF results in patients. But as I would lately, later describe, embryo and oocyte vitrification, which is just one cell, is uh, rather effective. Uh, on the other hand, since ovarian tissue is a tissue with a, a complex of several uh, cells, uh, with them slow freezing works still better. Uh, then, once we cryopreserve ovarian tissue, it doesn't get frozen uh, in its totality. Primordial follicles, which we uh, can assess, are located at the distance of 0.75 millimeters from the external cortex. In other words, majority of primordial follicles of the ovaries are located within one millimeter of the cortex. Thus, when uh, the uh, ovarian tissue is f uh, frozen, majority of its stroma is not uh, frozen. We freeze only the uh, cortex. These procedures could be done clinically after accumulating data from various experiments, uh, uh, but not for immediate uh, clinical trials with uh, human uh, patients. For that uh, m uh, purpose, we use xenotransplantation model. For that, we use uh, SCID mice with deficit of B and, P, uh, and T cells. When it's the size of cells, and transplant ovarian, human ovarian tissues into the uh, back uh, uh, muscle or uh, kidney capsule, and then we test uh, uh, transplantation results. If you look at the results of that experiment one month after transplantation, then when uh, we again took the ovarian tissue, you can see lots of ovarian follicles in those, uh, in those grafts. Uh, as I mentioned before, Ovarian tissue cryopreservation is considered as an experimental technique. 
So while we develop the technology, the results uh, improve. And as I mentioned, slow freezing in this case is more effective than vitrification. Ovarian tissue cryopreservation uh, indications, if you look at them, uh, you can see that it is done in case of when a patient when treated with chemo or radiotherapy uh, has a risk for premature ovarian failure is above 50% and with the age of below 35. And in fact, pregnancy is possible uh, five years after cancer treatment. If no previous chemotherapy or radiotherapy was done, and there are no multiple metastases, uh, uh, pregnancy is uh, possible. After cryopreservation, of our tissue cryopreservation, we uh, do transplantation. Uh, transplantation techniques could be uh, uh, classified depending on a vascular anastomosis. Depending on a place of implantation, they could be divided into orthotopic and or heterotopic. Orthotopic implantation is a variant tissue implantation in the place where previous ovary was located or where is ovarian ligament is located or ovarian bed or, perit or so-called peritoneal pocket. In other case, uh, implanting of uh, ovary tissue to the forearm or, or, or the abdominal wall, it's called heterotopic. As we do know, there are no uh, live births after heterotopic implantations. All live births, all recorded live births currently were obtained after orthotopic um, implantation. In 2001, the uh, Octai group informed about uh, first minimal translation of ovarian tissue. The same year, uh, uh, they informed about ovarian tissue transplantation at the patient's forearm. As you see, this bulging was a place where ovarian tissue was implanted. And indeed, we saw that uh, ovarian follicle was formed and also oocyte was obtained. In 2008, Nature published an article then uh, monozygote in, in case of monozygote twins ovary was removed and uh, transplanted uh, to another uh, sister to another uh, to her sister uh, this uh, this is a transplantation method by the well known donors group as a no donors group uh, in 2004, for the was the first in the world transplanting uh, was the first transplanting of ovarian tissue. Uh, they used to uh, transplant frozen uh, and thawed ovarian tissue. Uh, another surgical method was laparoscopy. Uh, uh, is used to transplant ovarian tissue, and in this uh, demester group, you see transplantation of uh, ovarian tissue into the ovarian uh, bed. Another group is the patients uh, undergoing uh, surgery because of endometriosis, when ovarian tissue removed during the surgery is re-implanted back because uh, it's it's not good just you to utilize it. So it's a case when the ovarian tissue removed during the surgery was re-implanted directly into the retroperitoneal space. It, uh, it was confirmed that the ovarian tissue is alive later on with repeated laparoscopy. Uh, another surgical method is a robotic ovarian tissue transplantation which was first done by Octay et al. in 2010. I also participated in that surgery. After cutting the ovarian tissue, uh, the uh, uh, frozen uh, ovarian tissue was soft. Once uh, the uh, ovarian tissue was uh, stitched into the skin the tissue, it was called, was called alloderma, and then uh, ovary was placed into the uh, initial um, location. Uh, thin cut ovarian tissue was transplanted into the uh, contra contralaterally uh, residual ovaries or with injection into the retroperitoneal space. If you look here, you can see the place of ovarian tissue transplantation. This is the final view. Uh, 
uh, later on in 2013, there was an article on uh, uh, multi-centered study. Three groups of uh, researchers uh, from Belgium, Denmark, and Spain uh, in, in, uh, published an article about the ovarian tissue transplantation. Probability for ovarian tissue function restoration was 92.9 percent, and they also said that to restore endocrine function, uh, it's necessary, it took 3.5, 6.5 months. Also, they informed about cases of pregnancy and deliveries. And live buzz. It is well known uh, that the longevity of such grafted variant tissue depends on uh, various factors, and the most important factor is the patient age at the time of cryopreservation. Baseline, uh, also, baseline variant reserve is important, cancer treatment history, uh, t techniques of variant tissue preparation, freezing zone protocols number of uh, cortical tissue grafted, techniques and sites of transplantation. Uh, it is all those issues are of importance. This is a uh, uh, report of our group. When we uh, uh, analyzed the number of cumulative live births, we found that we're about 80 live births, uh, live births uh, along the, uh, with the use of this uh, uh, method, um, so to say, um, suggested by Dennis et al. Majority of the researchers talked about the live births uh, obtained through uh, slow freezing rather than vitrification. Of course, the case of vitrification was in Spain. In the group, uh, it was done by the Kawamura and Suzuki. Besides, there have been added to another uh, groups from uh, three mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, from three others. When we started uh, cryopreservation and uh, uh, live birth rates uh, in 129 patients, in 32 cases, uh, uh, pregnancies actually developed. So Dene et al. presented a talk presented as an article uh, with a name is, uh, is named the time to move from experimental studies to open clinical applications of uh, ovarian tissue cryopreservation. Uh, I would like to show your first successful ovarian tissue preservation and presentation in Korea for the first time, which actually I uh, did. So. It was a patient of 23 years of age, and she was diagnosed with cervical cancer. That's why the treatment plan includes a, a chemo radiation therapy. Since patient uh, was planned to undergo radiation therapy, we did ovary, uh, both ovary transposition to avoid uh, of, uh, ovarian insufficiency because of radiotherapy. We did it, we did it with laparoscopic method. Along with transposition of both ovaries, we did a partial resection of uh, ovarian tissue for freezing. Here you see the MRI and PET CT images. As you can see, the dark gray part is cancer. At the left, you see parametric uh, spread of the tumor, typical for 2B stage. And here you see PET CT image. That's an ovarian tissue obtained through a partial resection of the tissue from uh, right and left ovary during the surgery. In fact, the patient had ovarian cysts. That's why the ovarian tissue in general was of quite uh, rather poor quality. I got prepared for cryopreservation. In 2011, uh, we vitrified the tissue. Patient was completely uh, considered as completely cured from cancer in 2016, and five years later she married. And since she a patient uh, uh, really insisted on ovarian tissue transplantation, some of the tissues were sought. First, we tested this tissue on presence of live follicles, and we confirmed small for the, uh, the uh, small, uh, little number of follicles. Uh, follicles are still alive. Uh, still alive. Later on, we got prepared to the surgery. In total, we sought about 150 pieces of the ovarian tissue. I started to uh, saw ovarian tissue along with the surgery start. It was my first case. 
That's why I decided to do laparotomy out of various uh, transplantation methods. And here you see the surgical field view. If you look here, uh, since the patient underwent radiotherapy, you could see clear, uh, clear, quite significant fibrosis at pelvic walls. Here we created three pelvic uh, pockets. As you see, after the pocket is produced, prepared and cut in small pieces, small pieces of uh, ovarian tissue were implanted. Uh, then we sutured uh, uh, with uh, Vicryl, uh, sutured the t this pocket with Vicryl, and uh, uh, and to uh, sort of finish the surgery. So. Uh, then, if you look sequentially at the patient condition, then you can see that in 2011, uh, the patient uh, underwent CCRT with, uh, so with uh, chemo, uh, meaning chemo radiation therapy, and you see that she immediately developed premature ovarian failure. Then the yellow uh, curve shows FSH levels, and the orange shows estradiol levels. Since FSH reached uh, levels above 45, she was diagnosed as having uh, uh, premature ovarian failure. After replacement hormonal therapy into, since 2012 to 2016, patient married in 2016, and she wanted her ovarian tissue to be red, red transplanted, and that's why in June 2016, uh, she underwent another surgery, and in five months post-op, she was confirmed to have uh, lowered uh, her FSH and elevated Estradiol, which resulted in uh, restored hormonal status. This is her CT scan post-transplantation. And both uh, regions, which you can see here, are areas of assumed transplantation. Uh, this case was published in the uh, European Journal of Gynecological Oncology as the first successful uh, case from Korea. As I mentioned before, such clinical cases uh, cannot be, so to say, implemented immediately, but we use them through uh, experience accumulation and various experiments. This study lasted five years with the support of the Korean Research Foundation and costed about 500 million rubles. So, and if I may, I would like to tell you about fertility preservation uh, surgery, which we can done in case of gynecological cancer. First of all, if talk about the cervical cancer, uh, as I should say, ovarian transposition is a well-known uh, standard way to decrease ovarian injury in patients treated with radiotherapy. Uh, transposition, ovarian transposition, uh, source location is very important to explain uh, patient position when the radiation field uh, for uh, the pelvic part, the upper limit is the uh, uh, fifth uh, lumbar um, uh, vertebra. So you need to move uh, ovarian to at least the upper part of the lumbar uh, area. If you look at the CT scan of this uh, patient, if I check the CT images, this position will be somewhere at the umbilicus level. So that's why when I do a laparoscopy, the camera is mostly introduced into the uh, or through the umbilicus. But if you go there, uh, where the uh, camera goes in, it will be the position where we can store ovaries, uh, uh, protecting them from radiation uh, field. The most important is transposition uh, location. So, how I can check the position? I mark it with a clip uh, after the ovarian transposition, and then I just check it uh, with x-rays. As you can see, this position, uh, this will be the right uh, ovarian uh, position. It is uh, its uh, upper part, uh, uh, upper pole. You can see the clip here. It's not a very good location. In order to check if transposition, ovarian transposition was successful or not, I use the clip. It might look this way. If the initial position was uh, not properly uh, defined, if when post-op uh, sutures, uh, so to say, uh, got absorbed, uh, or, or the ovary might go down from its initial uh, transposition location.
then we will use trochlectomy in case of operable cancer, in operable cancer patients. As you know, trochlectomy is a method to of cutting uh, impaired cervix uterine and then suturing the residues of the vagina and cervix. It is done to women younger than 40, 45 years of age who would like to preserve their fertility in case of uh, 1A cancer or from 1A2 to A1. It's assumed that the tumor size should be below 2 centimeters. If it is above, then the risk for uh, uh, metastatic disease is high. Uh, uh, presence of squamous or adenosquamous cancer is, a, is an indication for trachelectomy. Онкологический аукомга, обстетик аукомул поасилте. При рассмотрении. If you look at oncological and obstetric outcomes, there is a meta-analysis which uh, you uh, can take into account. So, six six uh, hundred nineteen patients, and the number of relapse is um, three point five percent, and uh, um, lateral outcomes. Uh, approximately 1.9%. Uh, uh, overall number of those patients who uh, got pregnant, 236, and uh, live burn uh, or live delivery, 132 cases. Especially in the uh, bulky size tumors, there can be no adjuvant chemotherapy in, uh, in order to uh, re um, uh, keep fertility function, or trachelectomy can also be provided. 42 cases with a tumor size of over 2 centimeters. Relapses happened only two, in three cases. Thus, after no advent uh, chemotherapies, uh, you can look at the colonization or trachelectomy. Colonization can be done in 1A1, uh, 1A2. If you look at NCCM guidelines, uh, version 1, uh, 216, if it in uh, lymph, uh, lymphovascular, non, uh, absence of uh, uh, lymphovascular invasion, you need to leave margins of 3 millimeters, uh, negative margins, preferably non fragmented. But if it is 1A1, it's uh, LVSI. Uh, all the same uh, method as uh, I, uh, 1A2. So, but uh, we also need, uh, recommend pelvic lymph node dissection. Now let's look at the ovarian cancer. As a matter of fact, that there could be benign tumor, borderline tumors, and malignant tumors. Benign, quite naturally, are removed uh, conservatively, and uh, they do not um, pose a big problem, big difficulty. Now let's look at the borderline and malignant tumors. If it is borderline, cystectomy very frequently is resorted to unless there is a pathological uh, result. And uh, uh, unilateral, sal uh, uh, unilateral sal uh, cystectomy can also be done and uh, uh, hysterectomy uh, can relapse more frequently than uh, salpingorephrectomy. And it's much uh, higher, and, but there is no difference in survival. Borderline type of tumor are associated with good survival rate. Uh, 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 unilateral uh, cystectomy and uh, um, the lower is cir of cirrhosis type and the lower is mu mucinous type of tumor. If you compare serous and mucinous type of tumors, the last one is associated with a higher recurrence rate. But there is no difference in pregnancy rate, both in USO versus cystectomy. In other words, I would like to say that the absence of one of the ovaries does not reduce twofold the, percent of the pregnancy rate. As it was uh, demonstrated, fertility did not, was not significantly reduced if compared to unilateral um, ovaries. No difference in the number of pregnancies, but the, um, uh, there was shorter reproductive period or reproductive lifespan. So uh, USO 
is not different in the number of uh, pregnancies. NCCI guidelines also recommend ultrasound for uh, fertility sparing surgeries. Types of ovarian cancers can be subdivided into epithelium, cord stromal cells, as well as germ cells. Approximately 90% are epithelial cancers. This is the result of fertility sparing surgery for patients with, patients with ovarian cancer. As you can see in fertility sparing surgeries, if it is higher than I, uh, 1A or uh, grade uh, 3, then survival will be much worse. Subsequently, the stage uh, which uh, can be subject to fertility sparing surgery can vary from uh, 1A uh, to 1C, grades 1, uh, 1 to If it is uh, germ cell tumors, teratoma, uh, uh, this germinoma stage one, uh, or immature teratoma, uh, grade uh, two, grade three, embryonal, uh, embryonal tumor, or stage one A yolk sac tumors, all these are indicators for uh, USO. And uh, if uh, this is um, uh, malignant sex cord stromal tumors, then stage 1A up to C can be um, USO. But histological subtypes of such type of tumors are quite complex. You should definitely look through the WHO classification and verify whether it is malignant or um, benign pathology. Uh, carcinosarcoma as malignant mixed Mueller and tumors among different uh, uh, cell type of uh, ovarian cancer are associated with very poor prognosis uh, that means uh, you need to do restaging but you don't need uh, you, you cannot uh, you cannot um, uh, do the uh, fertility sparing surgery although there was a, a patient of 25 uh, years of age with carcinoma tumor size uh, 35 uh, to 25 centimeters, so it's USO plus uh, chemotherapy. She continues uh, feeling well, but such cases are very rare. And decision on surgery should definitely be taken after only after discussing these things with you know, the patient. In conclusion, let us look at the endometrial uh, cancer staging. It has several stages. If you look at the criteria for considering fertility sparing options in the uh, endometrial cancers, only well differentiated endometrioid uh, adenocarcinoma uh, can provide you with good fertility sparing options. This must be uh, verified by curatage. The patient uh, had endometrial cancer, which uh, can be diagnosed by means of uh, uh, MRI or ultrasound. Uh, MRI is more recommended more. There must be no metastasis and uh, no counterindications uh, to uh, medical treatment and fertility preservation. Uh, the patient must first of all uh, undergo consultation and understand how it all influences uh, cancer. We do the endometrial curatage in endometrial cancers. In hormonal therapy, we use medroxyprogesterone acetate, uh, magistral acetate as well. Uh, so in addition to this medication, we can use LMG uh, UID. Uh, this is uh, what is recommended for continuous therapy. If you look at the meta-analysis of an oncology outcomes and at the pregnancy out outcomes, the number of regression in patients accounted for 76.2%. Number of relapses, 40%. And number of uh, live births, 28%. I suppose that it's very important to explain it to the patient and also probabilities of getting pregnant. Another uh, report says that in some groups, results of pregnancy account for over 60 percent. 
among different uh, methods of LNG IUD, there, there are uh, the, the predominant uh, two other methods. NCCN guidelines say that uh, fertility sparing uh, options are possible in these patients, and apart from that, uh, to determine the treatment outcomes, endometrial um, uh, sampling should be done every three to six months. This sampling can be done by DEC and also by uh, endometrial biopsy. If in six to nine months post-treatment the patient develops cancer, then we will need to do uh, surgery, uh, including hysterectomy. If uh, there is full clinical response, then you can plan pregnancy, and after uh, pregnancy, they must be hysterectomy performed. Then in many cases, you uh, uh, can look at uh, ovarian, ovarian preservation in uh, um, endometrial cancers. The majority of articles uh, say that we can safely, rest uh, we can safely um, uh, spare the uh, ovaries and hysterectomy should be performed alone. And there is no difference, actually. So you can uh, have ovaries in young women. This is a very short, a brief report which I published and which um, includes indications and uh, different variants for different over, um, cancer of ovaries, endometrial cancers and the uh, ovaries, as well as cervical cancer. So take home messages. Uh, up to now, we looked at fertility preservation options, but in such patients, uh, chemotherapy and radiation therapy can induce preliminary ovarian failure and infertility. Our uh, duty is uh, to explain it to the patients before the onset of treatment. And uh, uh, otherwise, it can grow into huge legal problems. So it's very important to explain it to the patients how to uh, understand all these oncological outcomes as well as pregnancy outcomes. It is not possible uh, in advanced uh, cancers, only in early cancers. Uh, so uh, conservative surgery is the best, actually, option. These are publications on fertility preservation, which are, were, have been published by me. So if you need different materials, you can uh, take them into account. My main uh, article is the value of early referral to fertility preservation in young women with breast cancer in clinical oncology was published in uh, 2010 as the first I was the first author there. Thank you very much uh, for listening to my lecture. Um, uh, it's been Professor Lee who works in uh, Annam Clinic in uh, the uh, university clinic.